you know, it's a lot of people that are struggling in this economy. You have the have and have nots and um, the rich is getting richer while the poor is getting poor. Yeah. Uh, permanent recession. And um, a lot of people are struggling and there is a um, a food crisis. I, I believe they said one out of every five or one out of every four children is living in poverty, um, malnourished. Mm -hmm. Um. I mean, you know, Lupe Fiasco said something that was extremely insightful one time. You know, he's from the south side of Chicago. He's from the west side of Chicago. And he was saying that um, he went to go speak to um, to kids at his school. And um, what he realized was at that school that he went to speak to, the kids were going to school not to learn or not even to play sports or not even yep. to have social. They were actually going to school to eat. Yep. Because it, it was a free it was a free lunch program. They got free breakfast too. So they got two free meals out the day. Um, so let's hear what, what the CEO of Kellogg has to say about this situation. Some of the things that we're doing is first messaging. We gotta reach the consumer where they are. So we're advertising about cereal for dinner. If you think about the cost of cereal for a family versus what they might otherwise do, that's gonna be much more affordable. I'm all for innovation and marketing, but the idea of having cereal for dinner. Um, is there the potential for that to land the wrong way? Uh, we don't think so. In fact, it's landing really well right now, Carl. When we look at all of our data, of course, we would know that breakfast cereal is the number one choice for in-home consumption. We understand that for breakfast. It turns out that over 25% of our consumption is outside the breakfast occasion. A lot of it's at dinner, and that, that occasion continues to grow as well as the snacking occasion. But um, cereal for dinner is something that is, is probably more on trend now, and we would expect to continue as that consumer is under pressure. Yes, sir. It was a few things. Um, the one thing, that the, the smile took me out when he was just like, I don't think so, Gary. And he was like, <laughs> um, he said, uh, as consumers are under pressure, the under pressure consumers, the cereal for dinner play. Um, okay. Can I speak my mind? <laughs> please, please. <laughs> um, I want everybody on Twitter and Instagram to call for the firing of him immediately. Um, not only is it insensitive because he's not eating that shit for dinner. Cereal is not healthy. So the food that we allow in the United States of America to be consumed, other countries will not let their dogs eat it. It is not healthy. The nutritional value in cereal over the last... 35 years has went down, I think 60 or 70%. And the origin of cereal being mainstream in the United States of America was to drop the testosterone levels of males in the country. I don't think that him and his wife and his friends are eating cereal at night. So I don't think you should ask your consumers to do something that you're not doing. Um, I think it's in poor taste and opposed to telling them a better option for what that they could do to probably make more money, which is the premise of this show. You're telling them to eat cereal, which is already bad for um, the kids that eat it. I'm disappointed in him. Stock is okay. Um, I mean, the stock should have dropped to about 48 bucks. The last time the stock had a high was in 2015 at 87 bucks. I think you should be fired immediately though. These are my thoughts. These are reflective of Ian Dunlap and Red Panda only. Now earn your leisure, Troy. Mike or shot, etc. But he should be fucking fired. Go home immediately. So and Red Panda, everybody in Red Panda, I don't ever want you to buy Kellogg cereal for the next five years. Like it's bad. When Carl Quintanilla tells you to walk it back and you don't, like Carl very rarely on air on air will embarrass somebody and tell you to step a comment, step your comment back. Like Mark Haynes was the one back in the day that used to do that and Maria Bartiromo. It's in poor taste, but if he's talking like that now, imagine what other food CEOs are talking about behind the scenes. Like that, if this is a sign that they don't care, I don't know what is. But I, I think he should he should step down. Well, there was a, there was a thing called the French Revolution, <laughs> and there, there was a woman, really there was a woman called Maria Antoinette. Okay, and uh, when the people were starving in the street, mm -hmm. she said, um, "Let them eat cake." That's what she said. And yep. she, they took it. They took a head off because yeah. of that. This is so. I don't. I'm not. I don't want to to call. No, no, he's not. He took, this is actually the opening scene in the new, new uh, Napoleon movie. That's the opening scene. There you have it. Um. So and even Tupac had reference. You know when yep. 
after, after a while, when people get so so hungry, they're going to cannibalism. Hungry. I think that he that yep. was a metaphor. But um, I, I, so what? Oh, let's unpack this a little bit. Cereal shouldn't be eaten for any meal at all. Yeah. It's not even a real food, right? It's it's just made up. It's it, it's just made up. It's One of these American, product. yeah, it's a food product. It's not, it's not food. It's a food product. Mm. So technically, you shouldn't be eating cereal for any any meal of the day. But I don't know the difference between eating it for breakfast or dinner. If you're going to eat, like it, it's one of these things where it it it's one of these things, right? Where you you make a food to support the dairy industry, right? Even breakfast, the whole thing with breakfast, America is is all is is the greatest marketing tool ever. <clears throat> Why do we eat eggs and drink milk for breakfast? Because they wanted to support the dairy industry, which are huge lobbyists to Congress. Nobody, there's never been scientific research that says that eggs are more beneficial at 8 a.m. than they are at 10 p.m. A lot of things we don't question. A lot of things we don't question in life. I I eat, I eat, I don't really eat breakfast food. I don't really you, technically you say you're only supposed to actually really eat fruit um before 12 o'clock anyway. Flush out your system. So taking emotion out of this, I think that what he's trying to do is find creative ways to sell his product. Now, product is extremely harmful at any at any time of the day. They make special K? I don't know. Special K is that. We're talking about the frosted flakes of the world. So I, I would say that at best it was uneducated and Ill, Ill informed at best <laughs> at worst it was extremely unsensitive and completely heartless to people that are struggling mm -hmm. to actually put mm -hmm. food on the mm -hmm. table mm -hmm. right yes i don't think that cereal at night is a solution to um hunger i don't think that's a solution no. to hunger no but we all must have empathy and i think this is what happens when you lack empathy what i realized is that there's two worlds there's two countries in america and it's hard for any it's hard for the other side to relate to the other side this is why police brutality like if you live in a, a white neighborhood you've only had good interactions with cops your whole entire life they come through on like the fire trucks and they give out candy canes and they do like the crossing road um when the school closes and stuff like that so you could never really imagine that a cop would just brutally beat somebody for no reason. It's unfathomable. Mm. You have to think, okay, well, they had to do something to deserve this because cops are the greatest people of all time. The flip side to that is that if you grew up in a neighborhood where it was economically depressed, you probably never had a, a good interaction with a cop ever. Mm -hmm. You only know them as bad. So you mm -hmm. can never really look at a cop as, as being good. Neither perspective is wrong. It's based off of your own life experiences. Very few people have the opportunity to cross over and see things from the other side. So what ends up happening is that you live a life and you, you're in your own algorithm. We're all in our own algorithm, right? So you don't, you don't really even understand certain things because you never went through it. You don't know anybody that's went through it. So your empathy level has dropped to an all-time low. Yeah. And this hat this is a perfect example of that so i think we can use this as a as a learning point i don't necessarily want to just throw him under the bus here right threw himself under the bus but i think that it's important for all of us to have more empathy us included yeah. this is a, this is a learning situation that hopefully we can all become better people from and realize that you know if we're fortunate enough to be blessed with some some level of prosperity um that's a blessing but it's never to be taken for granted and you can never forget humble beginnings and people that may not have as much because there's always going to be more have nots than they are haves. Mm -hmm. I think empathy is the word. You got it. I think it was completely tone deaf, but it also was, uh, I don't even want to call it shocking. It was very like, okay, uh, th these, th this is the type of talk oh, that happens when they think no one's listening. They're just saying it to you out front, straight up. Like completely tone deaf, completely not even caring about the consumer, right? Like take these products and eat. I, I, when I was thinking of it, I'm just like, man, I remember when Seagull was saying like most nights ate sleep for dinner just because of the hunger that they did. Yeah. This dude saying that was just like. And, and here's the thing. They're charging more than ever for a right. smaller box. 
it, it's three I mean, fourths air in there. So, so, so here's the thing, right? Before these people, especially every CEO, and we we we've come in contact with a lot of CEOs and high uh, net worth people. Before they ever speak in public, they have a team of people coaching them on what to say. Yep. So at what point were you prompted, right, and went over the questions and here's how you're going to respond? Did he not say like, all right, no, nobody thought that that would be ill-advised? Or they just felt like, yo, I don't care. We don't, we he don't didn't care. Yeah. He didn't or, personally care. He, didn't, just, he just didn't give a fuck. Yeah. Frosted Flakes, Fruit Loops, Mini Wheats, Rice Krispies, Raisin Bran, Pops, Apple Jacks, Vector, Kraken, Honey Smacks, Crave, Smart Start, Pop Tarts is one of the worst treats you can give a kid ever in life. 